During the winter of 1850, a great storm raged across Orkney. It tore away the grass from a large dune known as Scara Bray. Beneath the sand, the ruins of ancient stone buildings were revealed and provided a clue to how past changes in climate transformed not only lives, but entire societies. As archaeologists began digging, they soon realised that the storm had uncovered the best preserved Neolithic village in Northern Europe. You know, it's extraordinary to think that people lived, loved and died here centuries before construction began at Stonehenge. This much we know. But there's mystery here too. When archaeologists were excavating the stones of Scarabray, they discovered something intriguing in the rubbish. Seeds of wheat. For seeds of wheat to grow, you need long, warm summers. Not too wet, not too windy. Not what you usually find on Orkney. Today, winds of 90 miles an hour regularly rip across the island, and it's around two degrees colder than the Scottish lowlands. If wheat grew here 5,000 years ago, the climate must have been different, both warmer and less stormy than it is now. And there's more. Further archaeological excavations found mounds of shellfish and cod bones, and on an island stripped of trees today, signs of clusters of birch, hazel and willow, woods that would have sheltered red deer and boar. This must have been an island paradise. The archaeological record begins to vanish around 4,000 years ago and shows no sign of struggle or conquest, no wreckage or skeletons. Instead, it seems, idyllic Scarabray was voluntarily abandoned. The question is why? One way to understand what happened to the people of Scarabray 4,000 years ago is to come here, to this loch, Loch Inch in the Cairngorm Mountains. One, two, three. One. Here, scientists like Professor Mary Edwards have a way of travelling back to the time of Scarabray, travelling in mud. The sediments here are a kind of diary. And if you know how to read them, they reveal much about the past. I always get a real kick out of realising that these lake bed sediments are archives of the past. You know, you see, it's like seeing the past emerge. Do you get a real kick out of this moment? Because you're never that, sure what you're going to get until you, you get to extrude it in this way. It's very surprising and you get very excited and you want to sort of poke it and prod <laughs> it and, and see if there's anything, anything catches your eye. It's fascinating. At which point here were the pharaohs building pyramids and, and you know, when yeah. was Scarabroy and all the rest of it, isn't it? That's you? right. It's fascinating. So what kind of indicators are in here? A lot of different ones. Pollen, obviously, for vegetation and... Little seeds, perhaps, or bits of um, plant material yeah, could be in there. Root, maybe. Yep, things like that. Little bits of wood, even, washed off the shore. We can see um, volcanic ash layers that are derived from big eruptions in Iceland oh. that blow across the Atlantic, and it's pretty well known when they occurred. Mm. So they actually give you time, time moments. And then as you move through, you actually then start to see further changes. So you'll see it's pretty warm, pretty nice things are growing well. And then the, the climate just starts to tip towards being not so good. Some quite serious decline in, in the general climate and some quite strong climate events. So 
Adding information from mud cores like these with the archaeological evidence reveals that the people of Scara Bray experience one of these climate events. Today, the average temperature in Scotland is just over seven degrees. Between 4000 BC and 3000 BC, Scotland enjoyed a warmer climatic period when temperatures were a couple of degrees higher than they are today. But then temperatures began to sink by two degrees. Two degrees that would have made a significant difference. Stormy winters, wet summers, failed crops, famines. The idyll of Scara Bray was shattered by climate change. The core's gone to tell what happened next. Between 4,000 and 2,000 years ago, the temperatures slowly fluctuate. Then they rise sharply through a medieval warm period, and then they plunge rapidly, the beginning of a period we now call the Little Ice Age. Starting in the 14th century, the Little Ice Age was around two to three degrees cooler than today and lasted for 500 years. An interval that brought not just snow, but storms as well. Some of the worst storms ever recorded. So bad that their effects are still visible on the landscape today.